Hi friends! It's been a while since we've seen each other. I'm here to read you a book and Luna's here to read a book too because she likes to read. Actually she likes to sit on my bed. Um, I was going to read to you A Seed is Sleepy. This is a book all about seeds because I know before we left school we were all talking about plants so I thought this would be a fun book to look at. It's a little long but I think you'll like it. It is written by Diana Hunts Aston and Sylvia Long. And this is a Texas Mountain Laurel pod. This one you probably know is a sunflower. And these are Japanese maple seeds. We see a lot of those around here, but usually they're green. So first up, this, look at all those seeds on those cover pages. Pretty cool, huh? Here's our title page, A Seed is Sleepy. A seed is sleepy. It lies there, tucked inside its flower, on its cone, or beneath the soil. Snug, still. This is a sunflower after it is dead and dried up. But you can see all those seeds in the flower. A seed is secretive. It does not reveal itself too quickly. Most seeds sleep through a season or two, waiting for the warmer temperatures of spring. But some take their time. Ten years might pass before the bright red-orange seeds of the Texas mountain laurel shows its purple blooms. So this becomes this. And if you're wondering, that noise was my cat leaving the room. A seed is fruitful. 90% of the plants on earth are flowering plants. Flowering plants produce fruits, fruits of all shapes and textures that keep the seeds cozy until they have found the right place to grow. This is, this is on the bottom because I know you guys know those are strawberries and a strawberry has its seeds on an outside. And this here is a papaya, blueberries. This is an almond. A seed is naked. Yes, naked. Scientists called gymnosperms, see, scientists called gymnosperms Seeds that aren't clothed in fruits, naked seeds. Most naked seeds hide themselves on the scales of cones until they're ready to make a dash for the ground. So who would guess that a seed as small as a freckle would grow into the world's tallest tree? Only 10% of redwood trees begin as seeds, though most redwood trees spring from existing trees. So here's the seed all the way down here that becomes this big tall tree. Seeds come in many sizes. The orchid seed is the smallest of all. There might be a million seeds in one pond. So all of this here is the orchid seeds. There's, look at those, so many seeds in that one pond. The seed of the coca de mer palm is the largest. It can weigh up to 60 pounds. 60 pounds? Some of you probably don't weigh 60 pounds. That's a really heavy seed. A seed is adventurous. It must strike out on its own in search of a less crowded place to put down roots. So these dandelion seeds, we know these, I bet a lot of us, <clears throat> when we see these blow on those and then we scatter the seeds everywhere. Drift seeds float on ocean currents from one shore to another. They have enough air inside them to keep them afloat. And their thick protective shells keep, keep out seawater. So these are some seeds that float on water to travel to different places. A seed is inventive. It, to find a spot to grow, a seed might leap from its pod or cling to a child's shoe or tumble through a bear's belly. 
A seed hopes to land where there is plenty of sunlight, soil, and water. Because we know sunlight, soil, and water, what are those? That's right, they're the basic needs of a plant. A seed is generous. It gives the baby plant or embryo a seed coat to keep it warm. The embryo's first meal comes from its seed leaves or cotyledons. That's a hard word to say. Seeds with one seed leaf, like corn, are called monocots. Seeds with two seed leaves, like beans, are called dicots. So this is a nice diagram of a seed with its embryo. And you can see inside the little root. And I know some of you had started sprouting your beans or your seeds in the windows where you could start to see the roots grow out of your plants. Some seeds are ancient. Not all seeds are eager to germinate. Some have lain dormant or slept undisturbed for more than a thousand years. The oldest known seed to sprout came from an extinct date palm tree. After it was unearthed from a long ago king's mountaintop palace in Israel, a scientist planted it. Four weeks later, it sprouted. A seed is thirsty and hungry. Once a seed has shed its coat, it drinks in the rain, the dew, and yesterday's icicles. It feasts on minerals in the soils. So we can see here's the bean, part of the seed. The root feels the tug of gravity and digs down deep. And you see the roots down here? Let's see, a little close to the window. Another part of the seed, the shoot, is sensitive to light, so it reaches up for the sky. So there's the shoot goes up, the root goes down. A seed is clever. It knows to seek the sunlight to push itself up, up, up through the soil, but it must wait a while before that happens. And plants make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. A seed is sleepy, but only until it has found a place in the sun and it has had its breakfast and a drink of water. Then a seed is, what do you think happens after the seed has its breakfast and its drink of water? It's not sleepy, then it is awake. What are these flowers? I bet you all know these flowers. That's right, they're sunflowers. Just like we started at the beginning of our story. And now look at all these. Aren't they so cool? All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope we get to see you soon. Bye.